One of my greatest pleasures as a flower farmer is peony harvest time. It's that time. So today I'm gonna to be taking you along to do some peony harvesting. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks from a flower farmer on how to grow peonies, how to cut peonies, and how to extend your peony season by two months. Let's go. We've been harvesting peonies for about a week now. Our weather has just gotten really hot and so it's been a slam to get things harvested because if we wait when the temperatures are into the 90s like they have been, then all the peonies blow open. So it's been a bit of a rush, but today it's a little cooler, a little overcast and windy. And so I can take a little more time and show you around our peony harvest here at the farm. This is year four now of us having peony roots in the ground. And usually it's recommended that we wait until year four to start harvesting peonies. Now, that being said, I have harvested a few in the past years, but not many, really mostly just to check colors. Otherwise, we've mostly been deadheading these peonies, and that's because it helps the peony roots really put energy down and into the roots. It helps them become more drought tolerant. It helps them be more pest resistant if they can put more energy into the roots instead of into the flowers. When we harvest, we just tend to cut off a lot of the foliage, which can weaken them a little bit and set them back. So even though it's been really hard, we've waited until year four to really start harvesting. But today I'm gonna to take you around, show you a couple things about harvesting. I'm also going to give you a trick on how to make your peonies last for a couple of months. And I'm gonna show you my favorite peony top secret most favorite peony ever right yes yes all right let's go cut some peonies remember the 3d ones are not flat and 2d are flat so draw a line it's 2d <laughs> okay draw What's that one mm -mm -mm. before i get started with the peonies i thought we would go check on the zinnias we seeded in our last video and see how those are doing. It will help protect them from bunnies. They're still vulnerable to the bunnies at this stage. So we'll just leave these, leave this cover on for now. And also before I start, I've got these beautiful solid asters here. These are a hybrid between an aster and solidago. So they put out this really pretty white yellow flower and they were really beautiful last year. Also, they worked really well for flower crowns. Um, and the bees loved them. One of our favorite things of the bees in the field, but they got floppy. And you can see they're just starting to do it now. So they're growing and then they get so tall, they just kind of flop. So I'm gonna net these up too before I get started with harvesting the peonies. I'm just gonna use some metal stakes and some hemp twine to tie these up. Um, I'm standing here in front of the peony section here, and this is just one of our patches of peonies. So what I wanted to show you here is kind of harvest stages. So when we're harvesting, at least here at the flower farm, the stage that I prefer to harvest at, and we have lots of different stages of bloom here. One, these double ruffled ones that's fully open and smells amazing. And then here we have one that's tighter. Here we have one that's kind of about to open. And then we have one that's really firm. So for us for harvest stage, what I like to do is harvest at this stage, which we call marshmallow stage. And literally it means it's kind of soft and squishy like a marshmallow. The petals are just starting to lift, and but they're not opened yet. And I prefer that because we can do two things. We can either store them, which we'll talk about in a second, or we can harvest them and put them in water and they'll open. So this is my preferred stage for harvesting for cut flower farming purposes. But then we have other stages that we can harvest at. So we could even harvest slightly tighter than this one. So say this one, where these guard petals are still on, you can see they're kind of still up, but it is still a little squishy, it has some give. We could even harvest them here and then store them for a couple months. But usually for myself, when I'm harvesting for my home, I like to cut them when they're a little bit more open. So closer to this stage, but not fully open. So once they've kind of reached this stage, I usually just let them bloom here on the plant. You could still cut them and bring them in, but they're not gonna have quite the base life. And certainly these ones that are fully open are not gonna have a great base life before they start to drop petals. At this stage, I just prefer to leave them on the plant 
because they're going to last longer on the plant than they will in the vase. Some of these Ito peonies, this is another one, this is called Bartzella, and it's a yellow bloom. And this one is so fragrant. I love Bartzella, also really nice, strong stems. Um, but you can see that actually we use a little bit of a different gauge. These tend to be a little bit pointier in the bud shape. And this is the stage where I like to harvest these Ito peonies. So you can see again, if I squish it, it has give to it. This is when I'd be harvesting this one. You can see these ones are starting to open here. And these ones I would be harvesting again tight. So at about this stage. This is what we call a double ruffled variety where it has lots and lots of layers of petals. But even though those ones are beautiful and I do love them, no, they are not my favorite. In contrast to those double ruffled blooms, we also have some that are more open face and more open blooms and you can see these ones are just fading these are our earliest blooming peonies over here kind of different staggers of bloom so that we get multiple different bloom times these ones tend to be our first ones to bloom so that's a little bit about the stages that i like to harvest at now one of the questions that i get a lot about peonies is how do you deal with ants on them because they do tend to the ants tend to flock to the sap that is on the exterior of the peony. And there's actually a myth that ants help to open peonies. It's actually not the case. Um, peonies are perfectly capable of opening on their own and even our plants that don't tend to have a lot of ants on them will open on their own. That's really not what they're for, but they are attracted to that sap on the outside. So if you wanna harvest them and bring them in, what you can do is just turn them upside down. I usually just cut them turn them upside down and give them a shake. I'm gonna quickly show you how I cut my peonies and how many I cut from each plant for best plant health. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. And you can see, it depends on what you're cutting for. Now in general, you don't wanna cut off too much. No more than one third of the blooms in any given year or else you'll weaken your plant. So one third of the blooms, and then if you really want your plant to be putting more energy into its roots, you could even disbud the other ones. The first three years especially, that you want the plant to be really putting its energy down into the roots, you, this is painful, but you'd wanna do it when the plants are small. You'd wanna come along and take off that bud because that's gonna keep it from blooming and keep it from going to seed. It can put more energy down into those roots. But for this one, now some of it comes down to what you're using it for. If you're going to use it for a bouquet, you'd want it to be a little bit taller. If you're using it in a short vase, then you only have to cut off a few sets of leaves. You know, you don't wanna cut off more foliage than you have to. But if it's for a bouquet, I'm gonna cut right above a leaf. And then best to remove most of the foliage. What we're left with is this. Now, one last thing that I wanted to mention is that if you really want to get large peony blooms, and I'm really bad about doing this, but you might consider doing it, is that when they are starting to bud, so about this stage, maybe even a little bit earlier, this one is covered with cottonwood, <laughs> stick to the sap, you'd want to disbud these little side shoots. So you see we have one main stem, and then we have these side shoots. So if you're in a hurry, you would just go ahead and cut these off so that now this stem is putting all of its energy into this one bloom. This can be a good idea if you're using these for cut flowers. So say you're growing them for a wedding, then cutting off these little side shoots is a good idea, especially when they're small. Ideally, you're doing it much before this stage. So when they're closer to this stage, just starting to visibly bud up, that's when you'd be wanting to disbud those side shoots. And they don't always have side shoots. It depends on the variety. Those Ito tend to not have side shoots. And you can see that now what they're actually doing is they're starting to go to seed. And so typically at this stage, I will be removing these because I don't want the peonies wasting energy on putting out seeds. This takes some work for them. And so I'd rather than be focusing on foliage and root development. Now, if you are going to stake and support your peonies, one good way to do it is using a peony ring. So this is really helpful if you're letting your peonies bloom on the plant. Now, here at the farm, we typically harvest before we get to this stage. We're really only letting them all bloom because we're doing a lot of photography for our upcoming book this spring. 
but otherwise we usually don't let them bloom so I usually don't bother staking them but if you're gonna let them bloom on the bush it can be helpful to support them so they don't flop over mid-season peonies do have really nice beautiful foliage at the end of the season and you can really get some nice colors from those peony foliages especially if they're not laying down on the ground another way that you can support your peonies if you don't want to buy a bunch of peony rings is you can just use some stakes put one stake next to the peony and I'll show you this here so this is another way you can support them so these ones are starting to flop so what we did is we hammered one t-post into the ground we took some twine down here at the base and we just looped twine all the way around and to the stake now if you're gonna do this make sure you put that stake far enough out from the peony so you don't puncture it and damage the peony root and we do do this sometimes especially if we're getting a really late spring snow because often what happens with those late spring snows is they're really really heavy and they can actually split our peonies out and create a lot of problems with the peonies and so if we know we're getting a spring snow I'll often stake them this way just because we have literally hundreds this is an easier way to do it than buying all those peony rings these are called Ito peonies and you can see how nice and strong these plants are so these don't need support this is really helpful if you're someone who likes to let your peonies bloom on the plant and you're not cutting them and bringing them in it can be really nice to not have to support them because it's just one less thing to have to do and they have these really nice strong stems let's go look at another example of this and then i'll show you my favorite peony the other thing i wanted to show you is kind of some of the things that we have growing with our peonies and we used to have landscape fabric and in fact we're still getting rid of some of our landscape fabric uh, we have one more section that we've just been pulling out today and in these areas what we've actually done is we've done some native grass in the walkways so we have mulched around our peonies which works here in my climate we're pretty dry um, if you're in a wetter climate then you could always pull your mulch back a little bit from your peonies really the bigger issue with peonies is that we don't want to keep them too warm in the winter so too thick of a mulch layer can keep them too warm in the winter and then they often won't bloom well in the spring and we do have them interplanted here with some creeping flocks and just to kind of serve as a little bit of a ground cover in between and give a little bit of interest here and then in the walkways we've done a mix of blue grandma and buffalo grass but we're trying to get some native grass going here in this walkway just to give a little bit more biodiversity going here and we also have if behind me here we also have a lot of other things planted so we've got uh, this is a native dogwood here we have some yarrow here some solidago goldenrods more yarrow some sedum so even though it looks like it's a lot of peonies we also have some columbine growing in here but really what would be nice would be to plant something that would bloom a little bit later than the peonies just because the peonies bloom so early and then there's not much else going on here but for the sake of being a flower farm and the fact that we do sell a lot of our flowers having things planted in rows is helpful when it comes to harvesting it's just much faster and the other place where it is helpful is in cover cropping so you guys know I do cover cropping to do soil amending and in order to do that especially in the annual field over here I like to plant all my annual things in a row and then that way I can always be cover cropping and perennial cover cropping is a little bit trickier oof I have to show you these beautiful here are one of my favorites, but not my most favorite. Probably my second most favorite. These are the coral charms. And again, kind of letting these bloom for some photos, but the coral charms, this is how they start out. So they really are beautiful. This is a coral charm after it's opened. So they start out real coral and then they turn to this beautiful, peach oh, so pretty and coral charm tends to be a stronger stemmed plant too you can see these are not staked or supported at all and yet they're also not flopping over but that brings me to my favorite this one is fun but not my favorite 
And this one, this one is also really fun and beautiful, but it's also not my favorite. My favorite one is actually in our back peony field. So we have a few more peonies over here. And this is where we've been kind of removing a lot of our landscape fabric, as I mentioned. So my favorite ones are over here. Now here we just have mulched pathways. This is definitely easier to maintain. Uh, here it is. This is a peony called Canary Brilliance. And I adore this beautiful peony. Now look at the color that it starts out. It's peachy. It's dusty. It's that perfect kind of antique color. And then as they open, they turn this creamy yellow. So you can see the three stages together here. This is when they start to open, more open, and then fully open. So a really nice creamy color if you're more into sort of neutral tones. Now if you want to be planting peonies, the best time to do it is going to be in the fall and planting from bare root. If you're thinking about planting some peonies here in spring, heading into summer, you can do it if you have a potted peony plant. So you can buy a peony hole from the nursery and plant the whole pot in the ground. Just make sure that you're keeping it well watered heading into the warm summer months. So that first season, it's gonna need some extra water to really establish. Now you do typically have to be in colder zones in order to grow peonies. However, the Ito peonies tend to be a little bit more hardy of warm climates. And so if you are in a warm climate and you wanna try growing peonies, there are some varieties that might work for you. But for the most part, they tend to prefer colder winters. They are fairly drought tolerant, but in my experience, they do like to have some water in order to bloom their best. So fertilizing, especially in these perennial areas where it's much harder to cover crop because terminating a cover crop in and amongst perennial plants can be really tricky. I prefer to amend in here with things like aged sheep manure from the boys over there. Hey boys! So usually after they've bloomed is when I come through and I fertilize around the base of each plant and I just mix it in lightly to the surface with my fingers. And that is actually why I started removing a lot of this landscape fabric. I talked a lot about the plastic issues and the landscape fabric. Now when we started out with flower farming. I had done a lot of research and everyone had told me to use this plastic. You guys have heard me talk about this landscape fabric before. I used it for the first year, two seasons, almost two seasons. And since I've just been removing it all. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is the microplastics issue. So as this ages, it shreds off and there's also little both macroplastics, microplastics, nanoplastics that end up in our soil from this and the shocking part of landscape fabric is that it's accepted in organic production even though we know that it's putting microplastics into the soil and they're ending up in our food it's still allowed in organic production although they're discussing that they might be changing that here shortly so we'll see fingers crossed but the other reason is because i can't really do much soil amending um i find i have much better soil where we've had mulch sitting, that soil has free access to organic matter, where especially around the perennials, this is like a constant barrier to organic matter around the soil. So I can't get in easily and amend the soil. And let me show you what it looks like under here. Now we looked at the peonies over there where we haven't had landscape fabric for a while. Those peonies are all healthy, I have no disease. This back section of peonies where we've had landscape fabric, we have some diseases happening here. So some looks like maybe botrytis um, and I really feel like a lot of that has to do with the soil health. Um, there's actually a lot of research now that's showing that soil health is really important when it comes to funguses which makes total sense because actually if your soil is healthy and has a lot of good bacteria the fungus will prefer to consume that bacteria instead of attacking your plant. So interesting stuff there but look at the soil Look at the soil where the landscape fabric has been. Absolutely terrible. I mean, cracking, dry. This is horrible. This is so embarrassing to me to have soil like this. So anyway, this was the last section that I had to do. I just kind of been putting it off. Um, I went ahead and took this all out today. 
and now we're going to start the process of trying to fix this soil and get these diseases under control here. Speaking of diseases, um, one of the ones that peonies tend to get is powdery mildew. You'll usually see that the leaves tend to get that little bit of powdery, mildewy, white sheen, white cast to them toward the end of the season. It's totally normal. Peonies are just a little bit prone to that. The more space you can give them around each plant, the better. Also, interplanting with other things is always going to help too. And then the other one is this botrytis. So you can see that we have some fungus going here. And actually, what I need to do is come through and remove all of this diseased leaf and vegetation and discard it. Make sure you do compost this. So I need to come through and clear everything out, cut off all these diseased leaves as much as possible to minimize the spread. And at the end of the season, you should also be cutting your peonies all the way down to the ground. Now that's not necessarily true of tree peonies. So if you're growing tree peonies, they don't always get cut all the way down to the ground. So just be mindful if you're growing an ito or an intersectional, usually those get cut all the way down to the ground in the fall and then they'll regrow in the spring. So now that we've cut this one, I'm gonna tell you how you can extend your bloom time in the vase for up to two months. So there are different schools of thought on this process. There is one that says you should dry store these. Dry store is just what it sounds like. So I've cut this. I haven't put the stem into water. I'm gonna wrap it up in paper and put it into a fridge. Now you don't wanna put it in a fridge that is prone to freezing. Um, you don't want these to freeze. But you can put it in a fridge that stays, you know, fridge temperature. 37 is good. 36, 37. Now I'm going to show you how to do this dry storage. I'm going to give you the caveat that I actually don't prefer to store my peonies dry. I would rather store them in water. I just find they do better. They don't ever dehydrate like these ones do. But they'll take up more room in your fridge if you're just storing them in, you know, a vase or a glass than if they're dry wrapped. So. Let me show you how I do that. Got my piece of paper here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay my peony. And actually, you'd probably wanna remove as much foliage as possible. I'm going to fold it in and protect the bud first. We don't want that part to dry out. And you could use wax paper for this as well. Which would probably help a little bit more with moisture loss than just plain paper. And what we're trying to do is keep it from losing moisture but also not let it mold. All right, then I'm going to fold it over again and roll it up. And now I have my peony ready to put in the fridge. You could wrap up several, so I wouldn't do more than five of them together like this just because with that much moisture in here, you could lead to things like mold. And if you have a lot in here, so say you harvested all of your peonies and wrapped them all together, it wouldn't work that well. I wouldn't do more than five in one bunch in a wrapped paper like this. Keep it in the fridge. When you're ready to take it out and have it bloom, give it a fresh cut on the end and put it into water at room temperature. They will open for you if you've harvested at the right stage. So remember, don't harvest too tight. You don't want them to be firm like a marble. You want them to be just a little bit soft and have a little bit of give like a marshmallow. But that being said, I have a cooler that's a walk-in and I really prefer to store them in water. I just find they do better. So here I've cut this. You would just pop this one right into water, do the same thing, keep it in the fridge, take it out when you're ready to have it bloom, put it in some room temperature water, in room temperature, air temperature, like 70 degrees air temperature, and it will open up for you and bloom. So you can store them either in that dry paper or in a little bit of water in the fridge, both times in the fridge. Make sure it doesn't freeze. Don't keep it toward the back. If you have a fridge like mine where it freezes at the back. And you can store them that way for almost eight weeks. So we could be looking at taking these out in August and having peonies. All right guys, that's it for me here. I'm gonna go ahead and get harvesting and get some things picked here. Oh, just so amazing. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember to like and subscribe. Let me know if you want to see a farm tour, if you're interested in hearing something else from me, and I hope you guys will tune in next time. We'll see you around here at the farm.